Hello and welcome to episode 31 of the Knitting Pickle podcast. My name is Laura, I'm a knitwear designer and content creator here on YouTube, Instagram, Patreon and I'm here with a traditional format podcast for you today. It hasn't actually been that long. Normally it's a good month between podcasts but I've been a busy bee and we've got a pattern release this month so I'm filming this slightly in advance so that it can be live at the same time as the pattern release so I'll go into that in a minute but yeah I'm here again with you today I'm in my I think this might become my permanent spot again this is where I filmed the original very first podcast though it looked very different and I'm really comfy and cozy here we've been joined by my new buddy we have a brand new leaf I don't know what this plant is called but it's one of them zigzag boys that are really difficult to look after but this one just keeps pushing out leaves so I'm guessing he's happy so there you go here's our new little friend <laughs> I've also used my external mic today because I filmed here last time and though I was very very pleased with the picture quality of my new camera you can still hear the ticking of the focus and the camera when I use it. it's like onboard camera so we've got external so hopefully we've got good sound and good visuals for you today do let me know if you disagree like I can take the criticism it's fine I want this to be best as best as possible so any feedback greatly appreciated um yes i've got lots and lots to share with you today i've got seven finished objects which is a bit crazy <laughs> four of them i have cast on and finished since i last saw you <laughs> um but yeah and i've got some new whips as well to show you and i'm very excited to get stuck in but first of all we're going to do a little bit of admin and of course i'm going to share with you that the sibling sweater my size that i am wearing right here is now available on ravelry and i'm about to say instagram then um on ravelry and my website which is penroseknits.com I used to go by Penrose Knits, not anymore since losing my Instagram and I will eventually update my website and rebrand and everything but if you're new and you're wondering why it's Penrose Knits and not Laura Penrose, that's why. Um, and yeah, it's available for you now. Of course, there is a launch weekend discount. You can get 10% off using the code sibling off this pattern. And that code will also work for the original sibling sweater, which is a kid's sweater, which I released back in April or March, I think. Um, I made one for my daughter and then quickly made one for my son, hence it being called the sibling sweater. I have not yet to convince one of my siblings <laughs> to do pictures with me because I've got another version of this. I've got a purple version with a lot less positive ease. Um, and yeah, I haven't convinced them yet for a sibling picture, but maybe one day. <laughs> um, so yeah, the code works on both. So if you would like to twin with your little one, then there you go. If you are one of my patrons, either the cozy membership or the maximum cozy membership, you will get an extra discount, which is available on Patreon now. Um, if you're not over on my Patreon, I will do a special discount every time I release a pattern for all tier members. And you also get a little discount code that works on all of my patterns when you join. So if you would like some money off, it's well worth joining over there, even if you join and then cancel straight away. <laughs> or if you become a maximum cozy member, you get two videos a month as well um oh what's that that's the bin man so there you go i'm really pleased that this is finally done and out there as yes it was a bit of a roller coaster due to the way i was working and my mental health for a while but i'm in a really good place with both those things now so to have this guy out there and released i'm really pleased and it means i can move on to pastures new well not so new i've got some designs that have been kind of through the process for a while that I'm going to be moving on to but I do have another pattern release this month in a couple of weeks and that's still a bit of a whip so I'll show you that in a minute well in a little while um, but there will be another pattern release this month which is crazy although technically I'm releasing it right at the end of October so this is an October release and the other one will be a November release but it kind of feels like the same month <laughs> anyway shall we get on with the nitty chat and all my wonderful finished objects Yay! Obviously, this isn't a finished object. This is just, you know, shameless self promotion. But I do have another finished object underneath. And I'm going to do it first because I'm probably going to get a little bit cold. <laughs> so, bear with. 
did it work did that transition work maybe maybe not <laughs> anyway here we are look oh my gosh do i look a little bit naked it is very very close to my skin tone this is my mini mock neck tank by jesse made designs and i was nearly finished on this i think the last time i showed you but i am officially done i'm trying and hotch myself up a little bit there you go you can see it a bit better there so I I made this whilst I was on holiday in August and September and I am very very happy with it in I probably say 99% of it I'm no not a bit less than that 90% happy with it for reasons I'll go to in a minute but there you go you can see what it looks like na, 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 na. <laughs> I will not promise to do b-roll or photos because I think it's a bit of a like a, a podcasterism now to say you're going to put a photo in and then forget to do it during the edit <laughs> it's also a bit of a ball leg like, if I'm honest but here you go this is the main event anyway you can see it here so mini mock neck by Jesse May Designs I used a hand dyed sock yarn from Truly Yarns called Winter Stroll it's the most beautiful tonal brownie beige i have got a little bit of difference on here where i'm working flat and where i'm working on the body it's not a tension issue my tension working flat is exactly the same as my tension working in the round i'm an english knitter so my pearls and knits are pretty much exactly the same so it's not rowing out i did knit with this yarn this was i used it in something else ripped it out and so this portion has been knit with before which i think might be adding a little bit to it as well but it has been blocked and the bottom was fresh from the skein but it is all one skein one dye up but i don't know if you can really see mm, maybe that's better for a picture i've kind of stopped seeing it now if i'm honest but you can see a difference between the top half and the bottom half but i'm caring less and less about that it's not highly variegated it's only tonal so i think anyone like just looking at this probably wouldn't notice just anyone who's maybe a knitter or a dyer or something like that but overall i'm super super happy with the yarn it's really really soft i think i would have preferred a slightly tighter gauge and i mentioned this the last time i talked about this project and i think if when i make another one of these i will probably go up a size but down a needle size for a slightly tighter gauge and I would also like a little bit more coverage here I think I would prefer if this just kind of came out a little bit more because my I mean I don't mind or care about bra straps everybody knows that you know most women are wearing a bra but um and so it doesn't bother me if you can see my bra straps but I still feel like it looks nicer when you can't see it so I think a little bit more here would have been good however on the body when it's not fully tucked in i have got i'd say a like a little bit of positive ease neutral ease and it's meant to be negative ease it's obviously negative ease around the bust but i think because i've got quite a small waist compared to the rest of my body it is a little bit baggier on the body so i wouldn't necessarily want to size up in that department so i think what i would probably do is cast on the larger size so i get a little bit more coverage here and then adjust my underarm cast on because you do end up casting on quite a lot under here so there's a lot of wiggle room i will cast on less stitches at the underarm so i have less stitches than this i think this is a size i can't remember if they're letters or numbers I think it's letters this is the size me is this the medium or the, this is the medium i think i would go up to the large here but have a body of a small <laughs> either way it's really easy to kind of edit this knit to work for your body and your taste more i did also do the neckband a lot smaller it's meant to be a mock neck so it kind of comes up to here but i didn't know how i would feel about having exposed arms but a covered neck like sensory wise i do think i'd be all right with that now especially if i am wearing it under something i obviously haven't made this in summer so i don't know if i will be wearing this in the warmer weather just as it is but i have been enjoying wearing it as a layering piece in the autumn and cardigans and shirts and jumpers it's just a really nice layer it's lovely next to skin and it's 
fabulous i would like some more in some maybe slightly braver brighter colors but we will see um so i think i would extend the neck in the pattern you get instructions for a well you get lengths for a mock neck and a crew neck but i went kind of in between the two because i thought the crew neck was just a little bit too small i'm not the biggest fan of like tiny rib so i kind of went in between and i think it looks great i also love that the edging is worked into the to the actual piece so that when you're finished you then don't have to go up and pick up stitches and work the armhole you're just done that's really really nice so yeah overall i'm super super happy with this and I, yeah i can definitely see more in my future especially as it's a really good stash buster i used one skein for mine and i got quite a lot of length out of it my body is longer than in the pattern um but i think i would also consider doing it slightly shorter for the summer but i wanted to be able to like tuck it in and have my whole torso covered when i'm wearing high-waisted jeans i am cold now <laughs> so i am going to slip into my next finished object shall we try the swipey again <sighs> did it work we will see in the edit <laughs> so hello welcome back to my second finished object <laughs> this is a slip over clearly and i did show this in my vlog i did a little october vlog for you guys on youtube this month and i think i shared it in that one i think i intended to work on it but i didn't but i did show it but if you are seeing this for the first time this is my fake friday slip over <laughs> it looks a bit like a friday slipover but it's not a friday slipover friday slipover is by petite knit and it's a broken rib slipover but it's at quite a small gauge it's on 3.5 millimeter needles and i think it uses like one strand of fingering one strand of lace weight fluff but i have got one strand of dk and one strand of lace weight mohair in this one i wanted the look of a friday slip over but didn't want to knit it at that gauge i have made a friday slip over before my gauge was off so it's quite baggy and round and the shaping's a bit rubbish i decided to practice my continental knitting for that project for some reason <laughs> um so i didn't want to go through that again but i really did want like a textured rib slip over and i had quite a lot of the dk weight left over from my sibling sweater this one it is sailor in the dark um double sunday by sandler's garn i really like double sunday it does peel a huge amount and i just did my first kind of gleam of my sibling sweater and the ball of fluff was like this big but for me it's worth it because it's so soft and lovely and because i've held mohair with this one it should peel a lot less i used sana's gone tin silk mohair i don't know what the color is but i think it's like the darkest darkest blue and i like that mohair because it's got that bit of wool in it as well which makes it a bit thicker and poofier so i ended up working this on five millimeter needles rather than the 3.5 of the friday slip over but i feel like even though i created this myself did my own grading did my own construction did my own finishings i will not be forwarding this as a pattern that i would aim to release or grade or anything like that because i think i would just be asking for trouble because it's like such a dupe the friday slip over to be fair isn't quite so wide on the shoulder it comes more like here and i'd be well within my right to release this as a pattern if i wanted to but i don't want to <laughs> i've got plenty on the go um but i've also because i've written and graded this i've now kind of got a base pattern if i want to do different slip overs in the future with different textures and stuff so we will see i'm going to give you a little bit of a close-up of the texture it's so hard to um capture anything in this yarn because it's so dark and less learning that this is not a good idea for garment photos in the future um but yeah you can see there hopefully the texture it's a broken rib so it's knit one purl one on one row and then knit on the next row i love doing broken rib as well because you get that relief of a knit row and when you're working flat i make sure that that knit one purl one row is the wrong size so we're never doing a whole row of purl and i just find it really therapeutic and enjoyable and nice it's not like full rib for the finishings not that you can really see it that much um i ended up doing double knitting for the armholes and the neck hole because i wanted the look and the thickness of a double folded 
banned but I couldn't be bothered to do it and I know that kind of I guess in theory working double knitting it'll probably take the same amount of time to knit a, n double the length of normal knitting because you have to work each row kind of twice but I just wasn't in the mood for it and I really enjoy double knit and I kind of spread them out a little bit I did the neckline quite early on and then I did a bit more body and then I did one arm and a bit more body in the other arm so um just kind of like yeah spread it out amongst the project but I think it looks really really nice it is almost impossible to show you the details but yeah you get the look of the double folded and I get to do a tubular bind off along here which I really really like I think it looks, looks so neat and tidy and lovely so yeah that's what I did for the finishings for the body shall I hot chop again <laughs> I did a little split hem just within the bottom rib not within the texture but it's just normal one by one rib and the back I don't know how long I've seen. the back is slightly longer than the front but not drastically so and I just find just because I like the look of that when I'm wearing something that's going to go over jeans I just think it looks really really nice and I kind of wish I'd done a split hem on my oversized sibling sweater I've got a split hem on my lesser ease sibling sweater which I think I would have preferred now to have been a normal um hem and then the split hem on my bigger one but it doesn't really matter because my bigger one is big enough um, basically I just like to avoid that kind of cinching in of the rib on the bottom on something that's going not being tucked in because I find it's just yeah I just find it a bit annoying so yeah I did a little split hem and I've been really really enjoying wearing this and really enjoying styling it as well it's a little out of my comfort zone I'm not really a blue person and obviously this is like the darkest blue it's basically black but I have been finding ways to wear it I've got a beautiful brown dress and it looks so nice over it looks so autumnal and whimsical and yeah it's a little out of my comfort zone but I love it and then just with like a white top underneath and some jeans I find it looks better with dark jeans than light jeans and a little bit gold jewellery and yeah this is what I've been wearing most recently so that's my next finished object and I'm going to keep this on for the remainder of the podcast um my next finished object I don't have with me because Mr Penrose is wearing it today <laughs> I forgot to tell him not to wear it today because I was going to film but it's also a project that I feel like I have been talking about and sharing for months and months and months and that's because I have, because <laughs> I started it in July and that's the Moby Sweater Man. If you have been with me for a while, you're going to know what it looks like, my goodness. <laughs> I've shown it so much, but I'll pop in a little picture for those of you who are new here. Um, and it's also, it's the Moby Sweater. Most people, I would say, have seen it at some point and know what it looks like and I don't think we need to go into too much detail with it, other than the fact that it is finally finished i actually finished it a few days early gave it to mr penrose on our anniversary and he absolutely loved it it fits beautifully he wears it all the time it makes me so happy when i see him in it and it was worth every single second of it um for those of you who are wondering yes he had figured it out kind of <laughs> i said to him did you know i was doing this had you seen it had you figured it out and he was like i knew you were making me something but i didn't know it was the white cabled thing i don't know if i believe him or not i don't know if he was just trying to make me feel a bit better but he said yeah i had i i looked over at you and you were writing on your stories about making something for me and I saw that's what I saw so I was like oh so it wasn't the thumbnail thing where you were like editing it because you asked me about the white cabled one he was like yeah he hadn't linked those two things together so yeah it is done and he loves it and yeah it was lovely to give it to him I was so proud of myself he got me some beautiful yarn for our seven year anniversary and we were actually talking I was talking to him about it yesterday because I, I don't know if I mentioned this I don't know if I've mentioned this on YouTube, but the yarn he got me, one of the colours, it's very, very purple and it's not really my thing. I don't really wear purple and I kind of broached this subject with him the other night and I was like, 
how would you feel if I use this to make something for somebody else or if I used it to make something for you because purple is just not really my colour I love the yarn and I love the reason you chose the colour because obviously I like purple our wedding flowers were purple I like purple I just don't like wearing purple and I don't didn't want to like change it or return it or anything like that because it's so special but I also don't want it to be just sat in my stash like the rest of my purple yarn so I think I'm going to use it to make him something I'm not making him a Christmas jumper this year I'm not doing it. I've told him he was like oh I never assume you would I was like yeah but I have done one for you for the last four years so just wanted it to be clear um but he really likes it, so I think I'm going to use it for him eventually. Everything I've made for him has been really textured or really complicated. I've never made him something really simple. So I think I'm just going to make him a raglan sweater with it when I'm in the mood for stocking it. It's not going to be for any special occasion, or maybe I will do it for Christmas next year, but knit it all the way through 2024 rather than in the last few weeks before Christmas. Um, but that's what's going to happen with that yarn. And yeah, I'm glad. <laughs> So that's the Moby sweater done and dusted, yay. I have two other finished objects that I don't have here to show you because they were also gift knits. I made two hipster hats, again another petite knit pattern. Um, I decided it was my brother's 30th birthday, I've got two brothers and they're twins and it's their, it's their birthday on our wedding anniversary, we got married on their birthday with their permission, they got a free party <laughs> and then they were like early 20s, they didn't care. Um, but it was their 30th birthday this year and I realised I'd never knit for them before and it was probably an, a good occasion to so I made them both a hipster hat. I used my very last leftover Sailor in the Dark um, double Sunday for my for one brother's hat, twin one, <laughs> came out first and it looked lovely on him, it's really beautiful like dark blue and then for twin two the youngest one I used Sandra's Garn Perfect which was like a I think it's a sock yarn it's a super wash it's got nylon in it I think um, and twin two is a little bit rougher on his clothes and I just imagined him like dropping his hat or getting sweaty in it or something and I wanted him to be able to wash it quite easily um, so I used that for him and I also wasn't really sure what colour so I was like he dresses quite similar to me in colouring he's quite neutral like black white brown green that kind of thing I never see him in bright colours so I thought if I go with this lovely mild grey oh that'll be right for him I've got a picture of the blue one but I don't have a picture of the grey one <laughs> I don't think anyway unless it was like a story um and yeah those were my two hipster hats I really really enjoyed making them I've just remembered I've got another finished object <laughs> I'm gonna have to go and get in a minute um I really really enjoyed making them they were very very therapeutic I made the first one in 24 hours well over 24 hours it was probably about 10 hours work altogether, but I like went to sleep in between. I didn't knit solidly for 10 hours and I wouldn't ever condone that. But it was a really, really quick knit. It's two by two rib, which I find really easy. Um, I do think my gauge was a little bit off. Um, I look at the pictures of the hipster hats and they've kind of got this like looseness to them. Whereas every time I've made them, they've been very tight to the head, which is fine. They still look good. They still fit, obviously, because the, the fold is so thick, you can get away with any kind of head size really but I do feel like they would be nice with that little bit more ease to them so I think when I make another one which I will I'm probably going to go up a needle size I kind of forget that with petite knit patterns I do tend to have to go up a needle size my Moby was on a 4.5 and the pattern recommends a 4 I think that's because petite knit is a continental knitter and I'm an English knitter so continental knitters tend to knit looser especially when it comes to things like texture and purling and that kind of thing so when I make my next hipster hat I'm probably going to go up a needle size to a probably a 4 millimeter needle and hopefully that will give me that little bit more looseness and room to it speaking of hipster hats i did make one more and i'm gonna go get it <laughs> i was on an absolute hipster hat roll i absolutely loved making them and this time i went a little bit different my little one jeffrey needed a hat so i thought well i'm just gonna make him a hipster hat but this time i reverse engineered it <laughs> which was slightly problematic and I don't think I'd do it again but there was a very clear reason why I did that. Here we are. Isn't it so lovely? I love this. I love that rusty navy combination. 
This is, you guessed it, Sailor in the Dark. <laughs> I literally used every single scrap of the yarn I had. And that's kind of, that's the reason why I went top down rather than bottom up, because I basically just wanted to keep going and going and going until I had run out of this blue. And the rust is Philclon Arvetta in the shade Red Squirrel. It's deep, deep stash. I went through a real big phase with this color in this yarn. Um, so I had quite a lot of it and then just stopped using it. So that's got whole skein of that out of stash. I think it was pretty much a whole skein. I didn't have very much left over. So one, one skein of, one 50 gram skein of fingering weight and then a little bit of blue scrap and we have a hat. And again, this is the child size and it's tight on his head, which is nice and it will be great in the winter. But again, I think it just would look a bit nicer and probably be a bit more comfortable if it just had that bit more ease. So I think, again, if I go up a needle size, we'll be bang on. So obviously I reverse engineered it. So I did it top down so that I could just keep going and going and going. And I did have to restart it a few times just to get my head around it increasing rather than decreasing and the types of increases I was going to do because it's in two by two rib and when I started it I got the rib pattern slightly off the decreases or increases as you can see are done over four points and when I started it the bit this column was a pearl column rather than a knit column so that meant when I finished my increases I didn't have a complete knit to purl to pattern. I was like basically eight stitches short. And if I was to do an extra increase, I would have ended up with the adult size, which in hindsight probably would have been a slightly better fit for Jeff if I could just continued. But I did all the decreases the first time and then ripped them all out, and readjusted and I got there eventually. I do think the decreasing looks nicer than the increasing. I did a combination of make one left and right and make one front back. So if there was like a, a left side pearl bump, I do make one front back. Um, and just, yeah, I just feel like that that column that everything comes out of here looks much neater and nicer when it's decreased rather than increased but it's the top of a hat. It really doesn't matter. <laughs> and it's my son's hat as well. So this is gonna get chucked in muddy puddles and probably lost at school anyway. <laughs> Might have a little pom-pom on the top. That could be cute. He likes a pom-pom, but there you go. He has not been wearing this. I've asked him a few times if he wants to wear his hat and he's been like, no, he's not so keen on it. But I think once it gets really, really cold, he will need to. Uh, but I'm also considering making him another slightly larger one because I don't know, I think he's gonna, he's a bit like me with hats, I think. I think he's got a sensitive forehead and he doesn't like them to be too tight when he gets hot. So I think I'll probably make him another one and I might keep this one separate and nice to gift to my friend's son, whose birthday is just before Christmas and for the last three out of four years, I've made him a hat for his birthday and this would be so perfect for him. It's just my friend's colors. She's all about the neutrals as well and I think she would really like this. So I'm probably gonna keep this for him and make another one for my son because I'm really enjoying making them. They're kind of like, sock knitting to me that kind of repetitive simple not thinking about it project and um, so if i'm not in the mood for socks i'll probably do hats one more thing with this actually because i went top down and because i went striped i actually turned my work when i got to the brim so you can see here this is the wrong side of the stripes so when i got down to about here i tried it on his head and it was just before the point where i would fold it i turned the work and basically did a short row so that I was then working the other way around so that when I folded the brim up we got the right side of the stripes rather than the wrong side of the stripes and to do stripes in rib you will always just knit a plain row with a new color and then work in rib so every time I change the color there's a row of knits but it just gets lost you don't see it and that way you don't get these like pearl bumps when you're changing color like that i love it i just did two rows for the little stripes and i think six rows for the big stripes i love it so much maybe i just want one it's too small for me 
I just always end up looking like Harry from Home Alone when I wear a tight hat. I just want a loose, uh, a nice big loose beanie. I might do a Stockholm for myself rather than a hipster. We will see. Anyway, we need to continue on because it's now eight finished objects, not seven. The last two I have here with me. And they are accessories again. And you haven't seen these yet unless you follow me on Instagram. I've been a very, very busy bee. My plan this year for Christmas gift knitting is to make gloves for my son's teachers again. I did this last year for his reception teachers or kindergarten or foundation. We call it reception in his school. I made them all penny gloves last year. He's had three teachers last year. They have two teachers sharing the main role and then a TA and I made them all a pair of penny gloves and he loved that. He found out their favorite colors and I think it's because he was wearing hand knit mittens at the time which he liked to show his teacher. It was like nice for him to give them a pair as well. So I decided to do it again this year because he has new teachers. Penny now has Jeffrey's old teachers but I'm not gonna be knitting for them again. I can't knit six things a year although I probably would have the time to now and they already have a pair of hand knit mittens and I think hand knit mittens are a great gift for someone you don't know because who doesn't want or need mittens <laughs> like hats are very personal socks are very personal maybe a scarf but that's a big knit but a quick pair of fingerless mittens especially like are the perfect gift for someone you don't know but want to get a little something for I also went into my son's class last week to do a talk about wool and fibre because they're studying materials at the moment. It was an experience. <laughs> it caused me quite a lot of anxiety. I'm glad I did it in the end, but I also won't be doing it again. <laughs> but because I've been into his class and talked about wool, I think it's even more nicer for me now to make a little something for his teachers. So the first pair we have here if you joined me for vlogmas in july you will see that i started making world's simplest mittens by tin can knits and i have made one in this yarn combination but i just couldn't bring myself to cast on the next one and i figured out it was because of, of the rib and that's the thing that i struggle with with socks is working going straight into rib on a small circumference i just do not enjoy it at all i love rib in other cases in hats and stuff but that tiny circumference i hate it and i just didn't want to make them again <laughs> so i thought what was it that i loved last year about the penny gloves i love that they were simple i love that they were quick i love that i could commit the pattern to memory straight away and i thought right i'm gonna make penny gloves again but then i thought hang on a minute because I've got a lot more time this time, I'm starting a lot sooner. Let's go full mitten. So these are the Vienna gloves by Petite Knit. Again, I'm sorry, there's a lot of Petite Knit in this episode. <laughs> I think this is the last Petite Knit, yeah. <laughs> um, this is part of a set. There is a scarf that also comes in this set, but it is literally a tube. The pattern is like that long. It's like one paragraph pattern so i think that's probably why she included it with the mittens because there is no way you could charge money for that it would just be absolutely ridiculous um and i don't think i'll be making the scarf though i think personally i would like to have the scarf i probably enjoy knitting it like as my kind of non-thinking knitting so maybe i will do for myself i quite like the look of it um but this is what we're working on for the teachers and i'm up Obsessed. I'm just as obsessed on working on these as I was the penny gloves last year. They are just so lovely. And there isn't even a pull row to do when you cast on like with the penny gloves. It's just a little rolled hem. And I it's rare that I like a rolled hem. I don't like a rolled hem on garments because for me it feels unfinished. But I don't know what it is in this case. I just love it. Um, so this first pair is made with Knitting for Olive Merino. And I think it's either Drops Mohair or... Phil Kalana Telia, I don't know, it's an old stash ball. Everything is from stash. I'm not buying any new yarn for this, so I will need to buy one ball of mohair um, for my final pair. But you can see just how blooming beautiful it is. I can't remember the name of the Knitting for Olive colour. I think it's dusty blue, probably. <laughs> but yeah, they just make the nicest, loveliest, softest, warmest. I think they look really like... I mean, they are high quality. I made them and I used high quality yarn, but I feel like this is the kind of thing you'd see in a shop and it would like be really expensive. Like, I just think they're 
so beautiful i love the fit of them i love the long arm there's something so luxurious about the long arm and i love the fit of them too i like that they're not too big i did end up putting a little bit more length in the hand and in the thumb though i did less for my second pair um i don't know if the standards and hand sizes are different in where is it particularly it's from i feel like it's sweden um <laughs> but then i'm like oh is it Denmark I don't know um but yes I did add a little bit of length to the hand but but yeah I did add a little bit of length to the hand and I'm really really pleased with it and I knit them up so quickly I think I did the entire pair over two days maximum probably even less I can just work on them while I'm watching the telly I worked on them whilst listening to an audiobook at the weekend and I have a second pair <laughs> and i think these ones are my favorite so far these ones oh, are just gorgeous as i said my son went and found out all of his teacher's favorite colors and one of his teachers said pink and purple so i was like right okay how do i do this and i had a little look at my stash and i recently bought some hand dyed surrey alpaca when i was on holiday in norfolk from a dyer called blue fern yarns and that's the variegated purple that you can see and i held it with a strand of philcolon arvetta in a very very pale pink so i think you can really see that kind of pink and purple vibe but it's not like pink and purple stripes it's not heavily variegated i'm really impressed with the distribution of the color in this yarn it's not giving me stripes it's not giving me spiral it's not giving me tiger it's just really evenly spread no white patches i'm just i love it so much i haven't weighed how much i have left of it but i'm pretty sure i have enough of the fluff <clears throat> left to make another pair and i think i'm going to make these for my grandma as well this year because it's her birthday in december and i have made her a shawl for the past two years but she is in a care home now and shawls aren't the most practical thing for her now however mittens would be fantastic especially mittens where she doesn't have to try and get her fingers into five different holes for when she goes for walks around the grounds when she goes out with my mum when we take her places i think just a really nice pair of soft handmade mittens for her to just easily slide her hands into would be perfect and when i think of my grandma i think of purple if in all honesty i don't really know why but she's got a purple shawl so i think a pair of these would be so nice for my grandma as well and i'll probably use a more purpley base uh, fingering weight yarn like a light purple so we still see the variegation but less pink but yeah they're so beautiful for this one i did do a slightly shorter thumb because i think i did go a bit long on the first pair but overall it doesn't really matter i also did the arm five rows less just because i didn't quite have enough pink yarn um but i don't really think it makes that much of a difference really and I think I used just under 40 grams of fingering, fingering weight yarn in this pair with the slightly shorter arm. So I'd probably say you want 50 grams minimum for a full size pair. But if you're just under 50, kind of more around 40, I think you can get away with it just by shortening the arm a little bit. So there you go. These are my final finished objects oh i literally this is all i worked on this weekend and i'm really really excited to cast on the third pair which is going to be red and i'm going to use some of the yarn that my husband got me from copenhagen this year or was it last year it was last year actually but i need some fluff to go with it um but i don't want to order just one single ball of fluff so i'll either wait until i've got other things that i need to order or there are some yarn shops near me in the Cotswolds and I would really like to do a little on my own day trip and go have a little look around that I'm not but I'm not buying yarn I keep forgetting I'm, I'm on a yarn ban but I need this one ball of fluff to be fair at the end of November when I'm going on a very special little nitty holiday to see my friend get married we are probably going to go to a yarn shop because we're very near to Lancaster so we're going to go to a yarn shop there so maybe I'll wait till then to do the last pair that will be cutting it fine though I will have to do gift knitting in December but I think I'm all right with that we'll see anyway shall we move on to my whips I only have two whips <laughs> so we are nearly through all of the projects and then I've got some yarny goodness to show you yes I'm on a yarn band but it just makes its way to me and I can't help it <laughs> 
Right, so let's stick with accessories for now. And I have, I mean, I say it's a whip, but it's technically a half finished object because I, it's a pair of socks and I finished one sock. So <laughs> I probably won't show this again because I'll just be showing the same thing twice. So this is a nice transition, I think, from finished objects to whips. This, oh my goodness, I love this sock so much. I had so much fun. I cast this on when we went down to Devon. We went down for our anniversary to visit my in-laws as they were moving out the week after. So it was our last chance to go to Devon. I feel a bit sad about it, if I'm honest, that we won't be going down there for little family weekends and things. It's a shame, but it will be nice to have my in-laws closer to us. They've moved back up to the Midlands for a couple of months before they move out to Spain. <laughs> so yes, it was our last little trip down to Devon. And whilst we were there, I cast on this amazing sock of joy. <laughs> It is the rainbow neon speckle sock of joy that I have been hankering after for a long, long time. Isn't it stunning? And I did my little contrast heel and a little bit at the top. I don't know how well you can see that. The Rainbow Speckle Yarn is from The Wool Kitchen. It's the first time I've ever used their yarn and I'm really, really impressed. I think the distribution is good. I did have a slight kind of bare patch on the back here, but fortunately that just landed where the heel was. And if that was like on what would be the front of the sock, then I'd just move my beginning around so that the blank, the, the kind of more sparse bit was on the back of my legs, so I can't see it. But I've been really enjoying doing the whole sock in one colour and then a contrast heel and just a little pop on the cuff. I find if I have different heel, different toe, I find, <laughs> said this before, I get overstimulated by my own socks, which is absolutely ridiculous. But I find this way I get to use lots of this main colour and get to really enjoy it and then just have a little fun pop that I can't see from above. Um, the yellow pop, this like fluorescent, it's kind of like a pale neon. And it's kind of got a slight variegation to it as well. The camera's not enjoying that too much. It is brighter in real life. This is by Vicky Brown Designs and it was a little mini. And yeah, it's just a lovely, lovely sock. I've been wearing my hand knit socks loads recently. I tend to wear them much more in winter. I use them more like slippers. I don't wear them in shoes, but I do wear them in the morning and in the evening when I'm at home and I'm just keeping toasty warm. And I've actually done something different in this pair of socks that I would like to share with you because I think it's quite interesting and I'd like to know if it's something anyone else has ever done or if I just made it up and if I've invented a new toe because <laughs> wouldn't that be cool if I'd invented a new toe probably haven't though so when I do wear my hand knit socks I tend to wear through them quite quickly and the place that I tend to wear them wear them through the most is along the edge of the big toe that's the bit that always goes first or the very bottom of the like the pad of the foot but I since I've stopped doing sock slides around my house <laughs> that's happened less funnily enough um I have an old sock to show you actually I made this sock last year and I've worn it lots the blue this lovely uh blue variegated yarn is by Bird Street Yarns Mr B Yarns and it's held up incredibly well but my toe and heel are Phil Kalana Arveta which in my opinion is a great yarn, but you can see that where my big toe normally is, we've got what is gonna eventually be a hole. Let me put my hand inside so you can really see it. There we go. You can see here, this is slowly getting more stretched and more stretched. And I try and like alternate which feet the sock is on so that it's not always got that big toe pushing against it. It's sometimes on the other side with the little toe. Um, but it does get annoying. And to be fair, it's not the worst place to get a hole because I can just rip the toe out and re-knit it. It doesn't even have to be the same yarn. Um, but I would prefer to have a little bit more life in my socks and this not happen. So I did think, well, let's try an ergonomic toe so that the toe is more shaped around because I've got my second toe is longer than my big toe so if it was shaped more in the shape of my actual foot maybe I will get less strain on this side of the sock but I also kind of couldn't be bothered to learn how to do an ergonomic toe <laughs> but I will be seeing my friend Caroline soon and she's done them so she can teach me. 
she can be my Google. So instead, I thought, okay, well, how can I do the decreases differently to see if we can take some of the strain off it? I decided to do my decreases immediately and in the opposite way you normally would. <laughs> so for a normal wedge toe, you tend to knit one, decrease, and then do the decrease one stitch before the other side. So what you end up with this is this kind of thick channel and all the stitches decreasing in. What I decided to do was to decrease immediately. So as you can see here, there's more of a less obvious seam here and there's you don't have that big thick chunky bit here where everything goes in i'm wondering if in hindsight this was just the, a bad idea and if i'm still going to get the same kind of stretch here i don't know i really can't tell if i made a good decision or not and i haven't worn these yet but i do prefer the way it looks if i'm honest rather than the big thick two stitch section i think it looks really nice and really neat and really tidy um but to achieve it when you would normally so you would knit one slip slip knit knit to the other end knit two together knit one i swapped them around so i did a knit two together and then a slip slip knit the other way so you're kind of decreasing in the opposite direction it feels right i will put a little bit in the description of exactly what i did like i'm not precious about this i'm not trying to own it or anything if you want to try it try it um because I'm probably not making much sense. So if you did want to try it, you can. Um, but I also did it on the heel. So I think even if it doesn't give me any more strength in the toe area, I do think it also looks lovely on the heel. It just, I think it looks really neat and tidy and a little bit more like a commercial sock. So yeah, there you go, that's what I did. I'll let you know how I get on with the wear of them. And do let me know if you have any opinions i think i'm probably going to be better off with an ergonomic toe um but we'll see i'm just trying to save myself any effort so yeah hopefully these will be done soon because i am getting through my i think i've got three pairs of hand knitted socks that i enjoy wearing i've got a lot of pairs of color work socks but they're shorties and i don't like wearing shorties i've decided i don't like sensory wise where they sit on the ankle i find it i can't not think about it it like takes all my attention and it like eh, don't like it it needs to be a full leg and i also don't like the feeling of color work against my feet so it's just going to be plain vanilla knitting from now on i might do some ribbed socks i would like to make myself some sunday socks some really chunky thick warm socks that are basically slippers but i'm sure i'll get around to that at some point and then we have one more whip to show you and this is what i've shown you before but it's a really exciting place and it will be my november pattern release so in between all the mittens and all the hats and all the <laughs> socks and everything i've been slowly working on my second sample of my stella quilt cushion the first one is here Ta -da! this is the kind of ohio star version and my second but this is also aaron Waite. and my second version is this guy which is i'm not sure exactly what type of star this is called but as you can see it's a different design and oh i'm so glad to have this front panel finished because i love it so so much i think when i last showed you i was struggling with these two colors being very very similar this was like a beige and they just yeah they they weren't high contrast enough so i found another yarn this bright yellow which fortunately is the same dyer as all the other yarns all the color you see on this cushion is woolly mammoth fibers and most of it is from my advent from last year i think she's still got some advents for this year if you want to get hold of one and there are a few of her minis and this one is one of her big colors i bought two skate four skeins of half sock to make a jumper for penny i really didn't want to like pinch 10 grams from that like children's sweater quantity but it was the perfect color in the end so i'm really really glad i did and the white is phil Kalana saga and they're all held double so this is dk weight technically and i am on the back now you can see that the back piece of the cushion is constructed on its garter stitch on the bias to make it nice and strong so it doesn't sag and go all droopy and it's just yeah it's really satisfying and calming after the craziness of the front you can see i haven't woven my ends in 
yeah there are quite a few and normally i weave as i go but i just didn't this time and i'm regretting it i'm also considering just not weaving them in <laughs> i tied them all in really tight knots but what can happen is if you if you don't weave them in then you'll end up like getting little gaps where the points meet we don't really want that i'm also going to be doing a closure for this version this one is just sewn shut so you can't get the pillow out from the inside it's just all all shut there's only one seam it's all picked up and worked in one piece and then just one final seam that you mattress stitch shut and i don't even know which one it was because it's so neat and beautiful um but this one is going to have a, a an envelope closure basically once it's done there'll be it will be open <laughs> along one edge and then it'll have a flap that will come over along here and be attached here and here so you just kind of like open it up like a, an envelope kind of thing get your cushion in and out um so i really need to get cracking on this my testers have been working away we already have one finished front panel and it is the most christmasy festive thing you've ever seen in your life the color bits here are like alternating red and white and the background color is green and it looks amazing i will put a picture in I'm so excited to see that one finished we've got one that's like um, white and rust and it's like autumny and lovely there are just so many wonderful color combinations and we're having so much fun working them but i really need to get a crack on now because i haven't actually written the instructions for the back envelope bit um as I said, this is going to be released in November in time for advent knitting and gift knitting. I think this will make a brilliant Christmas gift, more than doable in a couple of weeks if you're like just evening knitting, if you don't have a huge amount of knitting time. If you do have more knitting time, I think you could probably get this done in a week or a couple of days, depending on how fast you are, especially the iron weight version that's sewn shut. That's probably the quickest way to do it. Within the pattern, you get this star and this star both with dk weight and aaron weight numbers but you can also uh, muck about with stitch counts to to work at any gauge that you want to if you are so inclined and there is guidance in the pattern it's not full instruction but there is guidance so if you're confident doing that i can basically tell you like what to do and how to do it um but this is also going to be fabulous for advent knitting this guy has eight different colors this guy has 12 sections so if you have a 12 skein advent calendar you can hold fingering weight double for dk and use a different color for each section of the star and have like a multi-colored little showcase of your 12 skein advent calendar you could also use your 24 with this one and this has 16 diamonds on it so you wouldn't uh, diamonds triangle so if you did each triangle a different color you wouldn't be able to use your full 24 skeins but you get to use 16 of them or if you had a 24 skein advent calendar you could make two of these pillows <laughs> in the dk weight they are designed to be roughly five grams each but it does kind of depend on your gauge and your knitting style some of mine came over at just over five grams some were just under so it does kind of depend but you can always edit the stitch count to ensure that they are under five grams each. And again, there's guidance in the pattern. So that should be ready for you in time for your advent knitting, obviously. And don't forget, you've also got a sweet shop for your advent knitting. <laughs> um, so yeah, there we go. That's the end of all the projects, I think. Isn't that crazy? I feel like that was quite a lot. I'm on half an hour, but I have stopped. So it's probably going to be a kind of long episode <laughs> so i do have a few little yarny acquisitions to share with you one of them i bought accidentally one of them i didn't buy so it doesn't count okay it doesn't count <laughs> first i'm going to show you is the one i bought i literally it was like two days after i decided that i was going to go on a yarn ban that i ordered this and then like completely forgot that i was on a yarn ban and then the next day i was like oh my god i'm not supposed to be buying yarn but i did <laughs> <laughs> but i'm really glad i did i'm so excited about this yarn and i'm really having to struggle i'm really struggling to not cast it on immediately i'm saving it for december this is going to be one of my christmas projects but i think once i finish my rainbow sock then oh, i have to cast this one on too um i mentioned this dyer actually in my the dyer of my blue socks i have bought this skein of sock yarn from bird street yarns i saw it on instagram and was instantly like yes i need this 
It's called I'm the Gingerbread Man and it's the four ply sparkle. I didn't know it was sparkly when I ordered it and I'm really, really glad because that was a lovely little festive surprise. But as you can see, we've got this lovely dark brown gingerbread and then the white with the green and red speckles. So festive, but not like overly Christmassy but I could also wear all year round and as you can tell from this type of yarn this is going to be a micro stripe I've never done a micro stripe before so I'm really excited to see how that works up so basically I don't want to take it out of its beautiful skein but if I was to take it out and lay it flat half would be brown and half would be white and that creates little tiny stripes um i don't know what i'm going to do in terms of contrast for this one i think it might be nice if it had a red heel um or maybe even a green heel or maybe just a white heel i'm not entirely sure yet i haven't decided i'm probably just going to knit the leg and then see how i feel i don't want to do a, a heel like in the stripe because i think that would that could interrupt it and look a bit weird but so i will do an afterthought heel as i do with almost every other sock but yeah we'll see there's also like oh i don't know what color what color heel would you do with this let me know i would really struggle with this kind of thing normally like with this one i will just pick out one of the colors so i just picked out the bright or the bright yellow and used it here and the same in this sock you can see that there are bright fuchsia pink speckles so i picked those out in my contrast but with this one i'm really not sure maybe i just need to go down to my sock yarn and hold loads of things together and see that's oh, that's my christmas sock knitting i'm not going to be doing any advent knitting this year for vlogmas i do have two advent calendars but i'm not going to be like doing knitting on this project with the advent yarns every day because this year i want there to be absolutely no obligation knitting whatsoever <laughs> after years of like killing myself with gift knitting at December and telling myself I'm not going to do it it still keeps happening so I've got no sweater garments this sweater garments I've got no gift garments this year I might have the odd pair of gloves or something but only if I want to and something I can work up in a day or two but it's mainly just going to be knitting on what I want to knit and one of those things is going to be a pair of Christmas socks there will be a garment for myself and then there may also be a blanket because I will be writing a blanket version of this and this <laughs> and it is going to be quite different from the cushion because it's going to be all about yardage for the blanket I basically want it to be you to be able to do a mix and match so you could do a whole blanket of this or a whole blanket of this or you could mix and match them and use both star designs and what I want, I want you to be able to use your single skeins. You know, when you have those beautiful skeins of sock yarn that you bought just one of. The idea is that it's going to be a DK weight blanket and all the contrast colour of this particular star, you should be able to get out of one 100 gram skein of either fingering weight or DK weight will make one of these motifs. So you can use that whole skein with very little leftovers. And then this star... These, the size of this star will also be the same as this so you could use your um kind of scraps leftovers for this basically and have this one solid color this other so i think what i'm going to do is use single skeins for this and then for this part of the blanket i will do this but just one color but they'll all be different so these will all be a different pink or they'll all all be different yellows or different greens different blues all for my kind of scrappy stash type thing and then just mix and match the whole blanket so i will be working on that sample in december i'm going to hopefully write the pattern up asap as soon as possible and get it out to my testers i've got a few people lined up to test the blanket already they won't need the entire blanket to be finished i'm going to do my best to get as much as i can done because i want to get the blanket pattern released in the next few months but obviously it takes a long time to knit a blanket my goodness i may um get hold of my sample knitter and see if she will help me with a few motifs and then i'll attach them all together but we will see um there will be instructions for knitting the whole thing as one piece or seaming your separate motifs because i think there are pros and cons of doing it either way i'm probably going to do each motif and then seam them um just because 
that's the way I think I would like to do it. So there you go. We went back to that project for a minute there, didn't we? Um, back to Acre. Oh, we were talking about what I'm knitting in December, weren't we? So yeah, blanket, socks, and a garment of some kind. Haven't decided yet. So I have, do have one more acquisition to show you, and it's a really special, beefy, chunky one. And I'm really, really excited to show you because it arrived the other day and haven't shared it yet. And I'm very excited about it. Can you tell? <laughs> so... I received an email from the lovely people over at, well, the lovely mill folk over at John Arben. I have worked with John Arben before. I have done a design with the Appledore yarn, which has not yet been released. It's in progress. It will be coming soon. I promise <laughs> it's on the list. Um, but they sent me a message saying we are releasing some new bases would you like some samples so i said yes please and i was expecting a couple of mini skeins or something <laughs> but they sent me four full skeins of yarn and i was absolutely blown away by it and another little special gift that i wasn't expecting either which i'll show you first i have very excitedly received a copy of the annual this is the third annual it's the book from john arben that's released every year i've seen this all over instagram i think their marketing team have done a stellar job this year and i wasn't expecting a copy of this and i'm really really pleased because it is so beautiful it has got patterns it has got puzzles it has got articles it has got illustrations it's just gorgeous there is there's one illustration where it's like find the sheep where is it is it can i have gone past it yeah here it is this one is find the sheep i'm not going to ruin it for you but i actually sat this and did sat and did this with my daughter and she found the sheep straight away she is scarily good at these things she finds wally straight away i'm the same and i am told that if you're autistic being able to see details and patterns and things really easily as a part of being autistic so i think she might get that from me obviously we don't know for sure but yeah she saw it straight away i've got the funniest story about that when we first moved to our house we've got this big view out of our front window over the fields and the first thing i spotted was the roof of a farmhouse right in the distance i was like oh it's such a beautiful and you can see a little like farmhouse over there it's so nice and a year later my husband went oh can you see that farmhouse over there and i was like how did how was that not the first thing you saw <laughs> it was like that's just my brain but yes the annual that was such a tangent it's so beautiful i encourage you to get your copy now and yeah it's been such a pleasure looking through it and i'm still i'm not i'm barely through it i've still got so much more to look at and do and yes i'm very excited but we're going to crack on with the yarn which i'm going to give a sneak peek of to you but i'm going to change my battery so i know it's definitely been an hour Woohoo! right change the battery okay back in the room fresh battery so they sent me two different types of yarn on their new bases but these are colorways and blends that they have done before just in different weights I'll start with the apple door this is the yarn i've made my john alban design out of it's like the the cross hatch sweater type thing yet to be named and i use the colorway quench and it's the most beautiful rustic blend of british wool in the most amazing colorways the yarn that i used is quench and it's like a subtle pastel rainbow but when you look at it from afar it looks like a neutral it's incredible and these are the two ones they sent me the apple door that i use for my sweater is dk weight and they're now doing it in aran weight which is really really exciting and i'm very tempted to do an iron weight version of the uh the sweater i've done already this colorway is called slack me Gur gurgle not gur girdle <laughs> why is it so hard today slack me girdle and sheep's nose and these are all apple breeds like breeds of apple varieties of apple <laughs> you don't get a breed of apple um and this one is like quench but dark so it's the same kind of um yellow pink and blue all blended together but the quench has a lot of white in it and this i think has got some orange in it and some green in it and oh it's just stunning when it's knitted up it just looks incredible and this is the sheep's nose which is a, like an icy gray blue this very much reminds me of jonathan's days <laughs> and actually i think it was jonathan who described the colorways by john arvin in the best way ever i think he said you know that moment when you're mixing paint together and that's that moment just before they all blend into one color that's what john arvin yarn is like you can see every individual color 
but together they make one color but you can still see all the elements and it's just so 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 gorgeous i love it so much it's amazing so this is the iron weight version which is really really cool because you can knit things up quicker it's ever so light the um dk weight version that i've got the jumper itself is very very lightweight doesn't feel heavy at all like dk merino can feel quite heavy on the body but this feels so lightweight and still super super warm so i'm looking forward to swatching these and deciding what to make with them i would definitely like a garment or a slip over out of this and then the other one they sent me is the harvest hues now i have used the harvest hues worsted for a pair of mittens for my mother-in-law a long time ago but they are they have now released a four ply version which is lovely because you can obviously use it as a four ply or you can hold it double to make dk so you've got a much bigger range of the harvest hues now this blend is much softer i should probably tell you the blend of this one it's like three different british breeds like 30 30 30 i think um i've got it here it should be in here da, 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 da. Apple door. here we go um so the apple door it's not 30 30 30 it's 40 percent devon close wool 40 percent romney 20 percent exmoor blue face it's the blend of that one and this is the harvest hues which is this is the 30 30 30 it's blue face leicester falklands merino and zwartles so you can it's definitely softer to touch it's still a wool it's not super wash it's not super slick and smooth but definitely on the rustic scale this is smoother <laughs> and again you've got that beautiful john arban mixy paint vibe where you can see all the individual colors but from a distance they all blend together this one is called medlar medlar and this one is peat and it's like brown and green and just gorgeous i'd love to make my husband a sweater out of this colorway this is 100 percent him but i'm not sure how he'd feel about the, the feel of it and this is just 100 percent me so I'm not sure what these will become, but I feel so privileged to have these at my disposal. And I strongly encourage anyone out there to give the John Arban Yarns a go. If you're looking for something beautifully, lovingly, bespoke, artisanally made, um, woolly wool, then this is your person. Or actually, even if you're like a smoother yarn, the knit by numbers, which is a new blend. The Knit by Numbers is Merino and Blueface Leicester, I think. They recently changed the blend. And yeah, oh, it's now, yeah, 50% Blueface Leicester, 50% Merino. So that's like super smooth and soft and gorgeous, but still not super washed, still beautifully non-commercially made. They're pretty massive now. I don't think they would count as commercial, but it's just, yeah, incredible. I love John Arben. They'll always have a very, very special place in my heart. This is really making me want to do colour work. I've got a very strong, strong itch for colour work. I think when I, now I've finished all my little sections of this, I've got loads of tiny little balls of all these colours left, plus a few other mini skeins. I've got quite a few blue ones. So I think I'm going to put them together and do a water bottle cover with them, which would be so, so fun. So yeah, there we go. That's it. That's everything. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed all the yarny chat let's do a little bit of life chat things are really really good at the moment i had a few tricky weeks this this month mentally but nothing i can't handle i'm getting a bit chilly hang on a minute i've been warming up my sweet shop blanket behind me and now i'm gonna get cozy yay um so yeah it's been a really good a few well no it's not been a good few weeks it's been a challenging few weeks but overall good because there have been challenges that i have been able to overcome which is something i wouldn't have been able to do a long time ago my work-life balance is great i'm really really enjoying work at the moment now i kind of finally see it as work i'm enjoying it so much more yesterday i sat down at my computer at 10 o'clock in the morning and went right up till quarter to three when i had to go and pick the kids up and just really really enjoyed it raring to go again today and just yeah excited about everything everything that's that's coming and not feeling any pressure to produce a certain amount by a certain time i am a little bit intimidated about the next few weeks <laughs> that time between 
um, like November which just always seems to go so quickly it's such a busy month we have my husband's birthday in November and then obviously the run up to Christmas I also have the wedding at the end of November as well which means I'm going to be away for three or four days on my own so excited but obviously December is vlogmas month and it's such a big month for me and it takes there's a lot of preparation that I do for vlogmas as well I know it just looks like you kind of pick up a camera and go but for me there's a lot more planning than that and after doing two vlogmases already and learning a lot from those experiences I'm I really feel like being prepared this year is going to be really 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 good so I've got a lot to do over the next few weeks and I'm really really excited for it I need to make a plan though because <laughs> so I've got pattern releases and patreon videos and vlogmas prep and wedding prep and just yeah so much going on but it makes me really really excited content wise on youtube what can you expect so there will be another podcast in november but i think that might be it until vlogmas because i also have two patreon videos to make in november i'm also going to be pre-filming a patreon video for december in november because vlogmas <laughs> um so there'll be like yeah hopefully everything's set up ready to go but yeah it's going to be a really really busy few weeks i'm really excited for it so yeah one podcast in november i am hoping that when i am away with all my nitty friends at the end of november we will be able to film a video you may know some of them i'm going away with the knit pearl girl sophie with caroline from caroline's knits simona who owns knit.co.uk though she doesn't present herself like publicly it's just her business and of course we're going to the lovely lizzie of hive knits wedding um lizzie won't be staying with us in the airbnb of course she'll be getting married <laughs> um but um the, the 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 rest of us will be in airbnb together and we're staying for an extra day as well so hopefully we'll be hitting up a yarn store and i would love to film a video with the girls if they're up for it or i might even vlog it we'll see but to get that vlog done and out before vlogmas might not be possible so who knows it might be something that we film and i release after vlogmas or during vlogmas i don't know but yeah so some really exciting content coming up for you i need to cast on my winter clutch that's another thing that needs to happen because i'd like to make a winter clutch to wear to zoe's zoe <laughs> to lizzie's wedding it's because i've been watching zoella this morning <laughs> Oh, I love to make the winter clutch. I've got everything ready to go. I just need to get it cast on, but I'm conscious of my cushion cover that does take precedent because that has got a deadline that's got that needs to be done. So I'll be probably working on that exclusively now until it's finished and then I will cast on the bag. And I have toyed with the idea of making a black cardigan to go with my black dress for the wedding, but I'm now not so sure because the black yarn I've got is basically very, very dark grey and I don't think I want to wear a grey cardigan. So if it's not the blackest of black, I'm not sure I want it. I'm also now wondering if a black cardigan is just going to be too much black. Obviously, we've got the like the pop hot pink bag i don't really want to go hot pink cardigan as well because i'm worried i'll look a little bit like a licorice or sort <laughs> so i need to have a little think about that and what i'm going to wear because it's going to be november i am going to be cold i've got a light green cardigan that might be really really nice or i've got my pink wrap me up cardigan which could also actually be really nice i might try that on with a dress and see um because it's like the dusky pink with the hot pink will be in like a nice amount of pink but not like licorice or sort of pink <laughs> so we will see but yeah that's what's going to be happening for me over the next few weeks i don't have any recommendations for you i've not really been watching anything new on youtube i think because i've been quite busy with my own content creation i tend to watch youtube less other than my kind of what i've already what i'm already watching what i'm already subscribed to so i think that brings us to the end i think i've rabbited on for long enough now i hope you've enjoyed the video i hope you're doing well wherever you are i hope you are happy and safe and enjoying your autumn or spring wherever you are um, don't forget to make use of the code for the sibling sweater um, it will run out 
in three days after release and yeah i look forward to seeing you again in a few weeks with the release of the stellar girl cushion wishing you all a lovely autumn and i will see you again soon bye bye